हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर विशाल फ्रॉम महाराजा अगर सैन यूनिवर्सिटी बदी हिमाचल प्रदेश टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द मड्यूल ट्रेड ब्लॉक्स अंडर द पेपर इंटरनेशनल बिजनेस ऑपरेशंस आफ्टर कंप्लीटिंग दिस मॉड्यूल स्टूडेंट्स यू विल बी एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड द मीनिंग एंड कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ ट्रेड ब्लॉक्स understand the causes of trade block formation know about the effects of trade blocks and understand the types of trade blocks the concept of trade block is crucial in the context of international business trade blocks are free trade zones designed to encourage trade activities across nations the formation of trade blocks involves a number of agreements on tariff trade and tax the activities of trade blocks have huge importance in the economic and political scenarios of the contemporary world over the years trading blocks have played a major role in regulating the trend and pattern of international trade regional trade blocks protect the interests of the member countries the primary aim of trade block activities is to create a favorable economic framework for promotion of cross border trade among the members country different regional blocks have come up in the period of economic liberalization in the various parts of the world some of the functionally active trading blocks are listed below north american free trade agreement shortly called as nafta european union association of southeast Asian nations central european free trade agreements greater arab free trade area south asian association for regional cooperation economic and monetary community of central africa east african community south african customs union pacific regional trade agreement african economic community and central american common market a particular country may be a member of more than one regional trading block however in order to do away with overlapping such nations are normally put within the most dynamic trade blocks here are the stages of economic integration around the world that is economic and monetary union economic union customs and monetary union common market customs union and multilateral free trade area activities of trade blocks it is true that the principal objective of all trade blocks is promotion of trade however the difference lies in their modes of operation the activities of trade blocks can be evaluated by using three basic measures the number of latest agreements meetings and other activities undertaken by regional trade blocks the pattern of future planning regarding trade promotion and focus on intergovernmental associations and quicker time frame for policy implementation number of practical achievements attained by the member countries in practice the success of trading blocks crucially depends on the performance of the member countries to ensure effective trade promotion the trading blocks need to be more flexible and accommodative besides trade promotion the regional blocks are also expected 
to take part in other domains of the member countries effective management of trade block activities ensures all round development of the member nations let's discuss the meaning and concept of trade blocks a trade block can be defined as a preferential trade agreement called as pta in a short sense between a subset of countries designed to significantly reduce or remove trade barriers within member countries when a trade block comprises neighboring or geographically close countries it is referred to as a regional trade or integration agreement it is sometimes also referred to as a natural trade block to underline that the preferential trade is between countries that have presumably low transportation costs or trade intensively with one another the two principal characteristics of a trade blocks are number 1 it implies a reduction or elimination of barriers to trade and number 2 this trade liberalization is discriminatory in the sense that it applies only to the member countries of the trade block outside countries being discriminated against in their trade relations with trade block members do few there exist as well regional integration agreements in which cooperation rather than preferential market access is emphasized trade blocks can also entail deeper forms of integration for instance of international competition investment labor and capital markets including movements of factors of production monetary policy etc the integration of countries into trade blocks is commonly referred to as regionalism irrespective of whether the trade block has a geographical basis or not the first waves of ptas appeared in the 1930s leading to a fragmentation of the world into trade blocks this odd regionalism is also associated with regional initiative involving developing countries in the 1950s and 1960s based on objective of import substitution industrialization the rationale was that developing countries could reap the benefit from economies of scale by opening up their trade preferences among themselves hence reducing the cost of their individual import substitution strategy while the trade block became more self sufficient more successful experiences followed with the recent proliferation of trade blocks the so called new regionalism which involve mostly countries from the north with the south the north south trade blocks while there is a proliferation of ptas in the world and almost every country in europe in latin america and in sub saharan africa belongs to at least one pta not all ptas are effective at liberalizing intra block trade for instance focusing on the trend in intra block trade intensities and shares it appears that nafta the us israel fta cacm the adian group mercosur ceao uemoa and sacu can be considered as effective trade blocks which does not mean that they are efficient whereas asian seems to be so far a rather ineffective grouping the causes of 
ट्रेड ब्लॉक फॉर्मेशन सेवरल रीजन एक्सप्लेन द रिसेंट इमरजेंस ऑफ ट्रेड ब्लॉक्स द सो कॉल्ड ओल्ड रीजनलिज्म वॉज मोटिवेटेड बाय द डिजायर to pursue in developing countries import substitution development at a regional level to insulate a region from the world economy and to stabilize and foster the economy at a regional level political and economic considerations also played a major role as in the case of european coal and steel community and the european economic community the recent emergence of trade blocks has been explained by various factors recognizing the gains from the liberalization it is often argued that concluding a pta is a politically easier than pursuing multilateral trade liberalization agreements it is easier to negotiate with few partners then with a large number of participants in the multinational or multilateral process as envisaged under the gate that is general agreement on tariffs and trade or world bank organization called as wto not only concessions can be more easily exchanged among a small number of countries but effective enforcement mechanisms can also be agreed upon at lower cost the length and difficulties encountered during the urge round of gate negotiations during 1986 and 94 is usually considered to have contributed to increase the attractiveness of the regional path to trade liberalization pta's also allow trading partners to go deeper and faster in their liberalization process addressing modern trade barriers which are more varied more complex and less transparent than standard tariffs and quotas traditionally considered under gate rounds preferential integration agreements can also entails elements beyond standard trade policy concerns such as competition investments labor and market considerations in other words the fewer the number of participants to trade negotiations the larger the number of issues on which it is possible to reach an agreement another claimed advantage of ptas is that they may help ensuring the credibility of the reform process undertaken by one or several members of the trade bloc indeed trade blocs often involve reform minded countries willing to bind their commitments to liberalization process by entering a pta with larger entities more generally pta can serve as commitment signaling and insurance mechanisms in the policy determination of its members hence contributing to reducing uncertainty and increasing credibility about political and economic developments the effects of trade blocks discriminatory trade policy is the defining characteristics of a trade block the different types of trade blocks or ptas can be broadly distinguished in three categories first a free trade agreement or fta where trade barriers among member countries are removed but where each member remains responsible for the determination of its trade policy vis-a-vis non member countries second a custom union shortly called as cu with the liberalized intra block trade as well as the adoption of external tariff structure and trade barriers towards outsiders common to all members of the cu and number third a common market which entails a cu 
with deeper integration between its members such as free movements of goods, services and factors of production, common economic policies, etc. Most of the analysis on the effects of trade blocks focus on FTAs and or CUs. The effects of a PTA are of two types, the trade effects and the welfare effects. The trade effects comprise the impact of a PTA on the volume and quantity of trade, on the terms of trade, that is prices, and on the level of protection, generally tariffs, for PTA members and excluded countries. In analyzing the welfare effects of a PTA, it is important to distinguish between the impact of trade block on the welfare of number one, each of its member, number two, the trade block as a whole, and number three, the countries excluded from the trade block. A standard result of international trade theory is that in a competitive environment and in the absence of market distortions and externalities, free trade will maximize global welfare. Removing trade barriers between a subset of countries could therefore appear to be a priori, a move in the right direction. Yet, the theory of second best points out that removing a distortion while others remain in a place may not increase welfare. Trade blocks are examples of second best since a distortion is removed, that is, trade barriers between member countries, while another distortion is created in the form of discrimination between members and non members, as well as other market imperfections. Hence, the welfare implications of a trade block are ambiguous as they depend on many factors. The demonstration of the theory of second best situation entailed by a PTA was derived from the seminal work of Jacob Winner, which shows that while liberalizing trade between a group of countries can lead to trade creation between members, it can also reduce trade between the CU and its trading partners. The various types of trade blocks are discussed as follows. There are several levels of regional trade blocks. Some trade blocks liberalize more economic transactions than others. Five major categories of trade blocks are described as follows. Under a preferential trade agreement or PTA, member countries agree to lower but not eliminate trade barriers within the group to levels below those erected against outside economies. A free trade area or agreement called as FTA eliminates all trade restrictions between members of the trade bloc but each member maintains its own restrictions on trade with third countries. A custom union is a free trade area whose members agree on common tariffs against non-member countries. A common market allows for the free trade of goods among members sets common tariffs against outside countries and permits the free movement of factors of production among members. An economic union, EU, has all the characteristics of CM plus members agree to a uniform set of macroeconomic and microeconomic policies. The North American Free Trade Area, popularly known as NAFTA, consisting of Canada, Mexico and the United States is an example of free trade area. 
the European Union, which in 2002 adopted a single currency, the euro, administered by a regional central bank, is an example of an economic union. Preferential Trade Agreement A preferential trade area, also preferential trade agreements or PTA, is a trading block which gives preferential access to certain products from the participating countries. This is done by reducing tariffs but not by abolishing them completely. A PTA can be established through a trade packet. It is the first stage of economic integration. The line between a PTA and a free trade area may be blurred as almost any PTA has a main goal of becoming a FTA in accordance with the General Agreement on Tariffs and Trade. These tariffs preferences have created numerous departures from the normal trade relation principles, namely the WTO members should apply the same tariff to imports from other WTO members. Free Trade Agreements or FTA A free trade area is a trade bloc whose member countries have signed a free trade agreement which eliminates tariffs, import quotas and preferences on most goods and services traded between them. If people are also free to move between the countries in addition to FTA, it would also be considered an open border. It can be considered the second stage of economic integration. Countries choose this kind of economic integration if their economical structures are complementary. If their economical structures are competitive, they are more likely to form a custom union. Custom union. A custom union is a trade block which is composed of a free trade area with a common external tariff. The participant countries set up common external trade policy, but in some cases, they are different import quotas. Common competition policy is also helpful to avoid competition deficiency. Purposes for establishing a customs union normally include increasing economic efficiency and establishing closer political and cultural ties between the member countries. It is the third stage of economic integration. Custom union is established through trade packet. Common market. A single market is a type of trade block which is composed of free trade area for goods with common policies on product regulation and freedom of the movement of the factors of production that is capital and labor and of enterprise and services. The goal is that the movement of capital, labor, goods and services between the members is as easy as within them. The physical, technical and fiscal barriers among the members, states are removed to the maximum extent possible. These barriers obstruct the freedom of movement of the four factors of production. A common market is a first stage towards a single market and may be limited initially to a free trade area with relatively free movement of capital and of services but not so advanced in reduction of the rest of the trade barriers. The European Economic Community was the first example of a both common and single market but it was an economic union since it had additionally a custom union. Economic union. An economic union is a type of trade block which is composed 
of a common market with a customer union. The participant countries have both common policies on product regulation, freedom of movement of goods, services, and the factors of production, and a common external trade policy. The countries share a common currency purposes for establishing an economic union normally include increasing economic efficiency and establishing closer political and cultural ties between the member countries. Economic union is established through trade packet. The figure shows the various salient features of these trade blocks. Free trade area cover free trade among members. Custom union cover free trade among members as well as common external commercial policy. Common market is used for free trade among members plus common external commercial policy plus free factor mobility within the market. Economic union is used for free trade among members, common external commercial policy, free factor mobility within the market as well as harmonized economic policies. Economic integration is a combination of free trade among members, common external commercial policy, free factor mobility within the market harmonized economic policy as well as supranational organizational structure. The ambiguous welfare effects of a trade block. All of the models of international trade discussed earlier in the earlier modules showed that free trade maximizes the welfare of all nations. It is important to understand that this conclusion only holds in the case of universal free trade. However, in the case of trade blocks, neither the countries participating in the trade block nor the countries left outside the trade block are guaranteed an improvement in welfare. The formation of trade block may reduce the total value of welfare enhancing production in some or many countries of the world. Unlike the shift to universal free trade among all countries, a trade block has a theoretically ambiguous welfare effect. The reason for the ambiguity is that a free trade area creates additional trade among members of the block while it also diverts trade from countries outside the block. That is a trade block that eliminates tariffs among its members but maintains tariffs against outside countries may induce importers in a trade block country to buy from a higher cost producer within the block rather than from the world's true lowest cost suppliers who reside outside the trade block. Suppose that a tariff raises homeland's domestic price of trombones from PW to PT as shown in the figure 1. This price rise causes domestic dead weight losses equal to the areas B plus D and it also causes gains for the homeland government equal to the tariff revenue areas C plus F of which F is effectively paid by foreign suppliers. The welfare loss to homeland from the tariff is therefore the dead weight losses B plus D minus the gain in government revenue paid for by foreign suppliers that is F. Now, let's suppose that homeland forms a free trade area with one other country while it maintains its tariffs on products from all other countries in the world. Suppose also that producers located in the trade block partner economy have higher cost than the world's 
lowest cost producers then the gains from trade for homeland are not as clear as they are in the case of free trade with all other economies if the trade block partner countries supply curve for trombones is represented by supply curve sn in figure 2 which lies above the world supply curve sw the formation of a free trade area causes homeland's domestic price to fall to pf and its import of trombones will expand to ad is equal to of greater than bc is equal to oe the situation is further detailed in figure 3 the trade block reduces dead weight losses by g plus h as shown in figure 3 but tariff revenue f is no longer paid by foreign suppliers and the price paid to producers in the partner country is slightly higher which causes an additional loss equal to j is g plus h greater than f plus j in general g plus h can be larger than or smaller than f plus j thus forming a free trade area with one other country gives homeland an ambiguous welfare challenge so students let's now summarize what we have learned in this module in this module we have learned about the concept of trade blocks trade blocks are free trade zones designed to encourage trade activities across the nations it can be defined as preferential trade agreement between a subset of countries designed to significantly reduce or remove trade barriers within member countries when a trade block comprises neighboring or geographically close countries it is referred to as a regional trade agreement it is sometimes also referred to as a natural trade block to underline that the preferential trade is between countries that have presumably low transport cost or trade intensively with one another the two principal characteristics of a trade block are it implies a reduction or elimination of barriers to trade and this trade liberalization is discriminatory in the sense that it applies only to the member countries of the trade block outside countries being discriminated against in their trade relations with the trade block members thank you very much